Okay, I'm pretty sure I've taken this intro like 10 times already, but hello, good morning, you guys. Welcome to today's vlog, or welcome if you're new here. My name is Gabby. I wanted to vlog today because I wanted to do a postpartum Q&A. Even though I feel like it's long overdue, I've not gotten a chance to film it. I did ask questions over on my Instagram, so I have those to answer for you guys in today's vlog, but I just finished filming some TikTok stuff. I did a styling video for Medium Forest and purple ash from lululemon i feel like those videos are kind of controversial i basically did like in-store color combos i guess during my pregnancy because i couldn't try anything on so it wasn't anything in my closet and i feel like a lot of people either loved it or hated it but again I feel like style is very subjective and you know it's whatever you want it to be it could be like plain and simple like black and white with a color or it can be you know fun color combos i always love doing fun color combos when i worked at lululemon because i feel like you could kind of play with it more but anyways so i just filmed that i need to clean up all of these clothes back here but i also wanted to show you our newest little hobby which is this 1000 piece Costco puzzle. My mom got us a Costco membership and then when we we're at Costco, we saw this puzzle and thought it would be so much fun to do when the baby's napping or at night. So we've had this for like a week and we are almost finished it, kind of. A lot of progress has been made, but yeah, I don't know. I just love puzzles. I feel like they're so fun to do. Oh, no, where does this go? Here. There we go. I just feel like they're so much fun to do, especially when they have like so much little details. I just love looking for like every little thing. It's like a fun, I don't know, search and find, like where's Waldo kind of thing, but a puzzle and I just feel like it's so satisfying to do. So that has been keeping us well entertained for the past week. Well, other than, you know, taking care of a baby, but <laughs> Damon's trying to put him down for a nap right now. He always fights his daytime naps at the moment. I don't know why he sleeps great at night, but during the day it is a struggle to get him down for a nap, especially like an independent nap. Like we usually have to contact nap with him. So whether he's in the carrier or like Damon has to hold him or I hold him, something like that. Like he just does not want to sleep by himself. Like we have our pack and play set up like I showed you guys in the last vlog, but he will not sleep in here. There's like some stuff in here because he was having playtime. So we like to like prop him up on this like pillow that is technically a nursing pillow, but we use it for like tummy time or he likes to like sit up propped up like that in the pack and play. And then we have like his black and white toys from Love Every in here that he likes to look at. And then we have like a little like black and white crinkle mat thing that I put under his feet so he kind of gets that sensory I guess but yeah that is the that is what's going on right now I have ring it tonight too so I'm super excited to get back into it I had my six-week appointment yesterday everything looks good and I'm all clear to resume physical activity and all of that fun stuff and you know a normal life I guess it's kind of weird it's like bittersweet being done like i feel like i have officially graduated from my maternity i don't know clinic i guess because i'm being sent back to my regular doctors now six weeks postpartum so i'm no longer going to that clinic which i don't know i really enjoyed the care that i got there so if we have another child i'll definitely be going back if we still live here and yeah it was like super super good but yeah kind of sad that it's over and like he's he's passed he's graduated no other issues and we'll be back to like our regular family doctor for normal checkups and stuff like like that yeah I think that's all I have to update you on so I'll catch you up later all right we just got back from our walk and Hudson's having some playtime in the living room right now since he did sleep on the walk so he wasn't that interested in continuing his nap so I thought I would come in here and start filming the Q&A part of this video while I have some time, but hopefully he takes another nap later today or soon. Like he shouldn't have a very long wake window because it was not that long of a walk. We went for about half an hour. So he slept that whole time, but 
still his wake window should be small usually after four o'clock in the day everything seems to be a crapshoot so whether he sleeps or not or if he's awake for five hours straight I don't really know. Hopefully he does go to sleep soon because I have ringette tonight so Damon's watching him and I have to leave around like 8 30 and that's like prime witching hour so I hope he's not too bad because usually he's like fussy from 8 30 till 10 which is like the whole time I'm gone basically so hopefully hopefully he goes to sleep. Anyways I'm looking for the questions on my phone but it was from a long time ago because I asked them right after we came home from the hospital pretty much. Okay here they are. Okay so the first question I have here is how long was your labor? Total it was like from when contraction started to when he was out it was 28 hours. I was induced though I have a whole labor and delivery story time coming but i did vlog it all so that is up i still need to edit the actual story time thing i just have not gone around to it it's been low priority but hopefully i'll have that done soon but i did get induced the 28 hours doesn't include the time like i got my induction so i did the foley balloon type of induction so with that you can add three more hours, so 31, 32-ish hours would be how long my labor was. Definitely a long time. It does take a long time when you're induced, obviously, because it's not like natural or spontaneous. And yeah, I think that's pretty like average. It didn't take a couple days at least, so I'm happy about that. But it was like over like a day, technically. Second question is, did you have a birth plan? Did it go as planned? Yes, I did have a birth plan. I went over it with my doula and even my doctor, but of course it did not go to plan. I feel like I was somewhat delusional when I thought, oh, I'm going to have a spontaneous, fast, natural labor. Boy, was I so, so wrong. I had almost the furthest thing from that. Obviously, I think the furthest thing would be probably C-section. So I'm glad I didn't have to get a C-section, but it definitely did not go as planned at all. I was kind of hoping to like go as natural as possible if it was just going to go fast. I was hoping that, you know, maybe it'll just go fast enough that I don't even have time for too much intervention. I did want to try like the laughing gas first. I did not want morphine. And then the epidural was kind of like a last resort same with induction but at that point if you guys were following the vlogs and stuff I just was at my like end like I was 41 weeks and no signs of labor or anything and he was so comfy in there that I just went ahead with induction so that was definitely not as planned and I was definitely very nervous to be induced because I know that's when things can kind of go sideways obviously there's more intervention and they're monitoring you a little bit more closely when you're induced so no it did not go as planned okay I actually have it I found it so I will go through it basically with you change management again didn't want to offer it unless I asked for it I was planning on using like alternative methods like the birthing ball like a rebozo hydrotherapy like water shower and I was hoping those would be available to me but I did get stuck in triage for 12 hours of my labor or something crazy like that so none of those things were available to me and I was begging for the epidural by the time I got into actual labor and delivery so didn't use really any of those things I did try like walking and stairs and stuff like that to help speed up the labor but did not work for me unfortunately so that was definitely not going to plan and the way they kind of describe like labor and delivery or like labor itself was like early labor, you know, you'd have like period like cramps here and there, it might be intermittent, it might be on and off, and then they kind of get more consistent and like more strong and consecutive, and you know, they might be like five minutes apart, 10 minutes apart, and kind of getting closer, but I feel like because I was induced, mine were like pretty intense and painful and very quick, like I didn't have much time between them right away, like I had like two, maybe three minutes in between them, so I didn't, I wasn't getting much of a break, and I was like super, super tired, so maybe if, you know, it follows the classic type of labor patterns where I had more of a break in early labor I could have gone longer without an epidural maybe like I don't know who's to say but anyways then labor I, I wanted my water to rupture naturally which it did they again were planning to break my water manually when I got into triage but because they didn't have a room in labor and delivery for me they weren't able to move us and do that so it ended up breaking naturally thankfully so that went to plan i want music playing that i have didn't actually end up using the speaker or anything at all i was planning to use it during like the time that i pushed but 
I pushed like pretty quickly like it was 30 minutes of pushing and I didn't even like think about like setting it up like I'm like we need to get this baby out kind of thing so there you go I would like to move around I did follow that even with the epidural I was able to stand at the side of my bed I was able to like sit kind of on the yoga ball and kind of like move around in the bed like obviously assisted and I was able to go to the bathroom for the most part until like the very very end so that went mostly to plan I did <laughs> While we were in triage, I did a lot of walking and stairs or felt like a lot of walking. I think I only walked the hallway like twice and I was like, I'm done. Um, but yeah, and then I didn't really want coaching on when and how to push. I did get coaching for my doula, but I didn't want the nurses to be like coaching me and telling me um, when to push or being like, oh, good job. Like just like two minutes longer, or whatever. I'm not like a huge person that needs like affirmation like that. So I was like, mm, no, but having my doula coach me I feel like was way better on like how and where to push than like the nurses. I don't even think the nurses were really that present while I was pushing. They were like trying to get ready and stuff. So yeah, I didn't want to wear my own clothes. I wore the hospital gown because obviously birth is very messy and I didn't want to get like anything on my clothes. Like it was just easier to wear the hospital gown. If that got dirty or whatever, they could just change me into a new one. So I just went with my hospital gown. I did not want a mirror to view what was going on there. I was like, nope, don't tell me, don't show me don't let me look don't, nothing do not <laughs> just get this baby out safely and then I want to choose a position I deliver I, that did happen I tried the squat bar no bueno and then I think we ended up kind of almost in like a reclined position with a squat bar and then we had like almost like a blanket over it and I would like pull on it like lean back and kind of pull and push that way and that worked really well or my doula would like hold the other end of the towel and like um, tug on it for resistance and then I would like lean back and pull as well and that really helped um, for me personally She helped me with that position. So I did try like a couple but I just like was so tired and I couldn't like squat to push and it just felt like so much pressure that I didn't like that but I did end up choosing the position I deliver I think the doctor was like the only one I don't want you to do was the one where you like face backwards and like lean over the bed kind of on the top and like you're kind of like on your knees squatting ish she didn't want me to do that one because she said I can't see that well so I think that was like the only hindsight but I didn't even end up like needing to try that one obviously you wanted to avoid any interventions like the vacuum, forceps, episiotomy, that went to plan. We didn't decide, like Damon didn't want to cut the cord, I didn't want to cut the cord. My doula was going to, but because he had meconium coming out, they had to pretty much cut the cord right away and take him to get suctioned. So I was hoping to do cord clamping and delay cord clamping for five minutes, but again, that didn't go to plan. I was hoping for intermittent fetal monitoring so that I can move around, but because I got the epidural, they did have to do continuous, but it was still like enough like that I could still like move around the bed and like the cords were long enough for that. So I was okay with that. Didn't have to have a cesarean birth, but if I did have it, I was hoping to do skin to skin and have my arms free and I didn't want to be able to view. So that's if I had to have a cesarean. And then postpartum, I did want to do skin to skin immediately after delivery. They did put them on my chest for a minute, but he wasn't breathing that great. So they did take him for suctioning pretty quickly. So I didn't get to skin to skin like right after delivery, but they did bring him back pretty quickly quickly um, after he was stable and then I would like to breastfeed he wasn't really interested in that the first few hours but um, we did end up breastfeeding and then I was wanting the baby to choose when to breastfeed to crawl and find my boob basically <laughs> and then I wanted help from my doula to breastfeed as well instead of the nurses like coming over to latch him right away I was going to pump and combo feed which I do Tylenol and Advil for pain after absolutely I <laughs> that definitely went to plan and vitamin K for the baby as well and then yeah yeah, I think that's pretty much the birth plan. It mostly went to plan other than, you know, pain management and that kind of stuff. Okay, this person asked, what should I pack for my hospital bag? I did a whole video on what to pack or what I packed and then what I actually ended up using. So I, those are two separate videos that I have up on my channel. If you wanna go check those out, I feel like that's super helpful, but I will say every hospital is different. So it kind of depends on what they provide for you and what you might need to provide for yourself. Like ours said they provided limited number of like pads, diapers, wipes for the baby and stuff. So like we pack those I didn't end up using them but things like that like if there's something limited that they might you know not provide for you then obviously pack that ended up packing like stuff for the shower and things but never ended up using it comfy clothes like I don't know I don't I didn't really like wear a ton of clothes to be honest like I just wore the hospital gown especially at the beginning because they encourage skin to skin especially if you're nursing so basically I just 
had my hospital gown on, like didn't put on clothes until it's time to go home. I only had a 24 hour stay too. So it depends. If you do have like a cesarean, then it will be a longer stay. So you might need more things, but basically whatever you pack in your hospital bag is to make you feel comfortable in your hospital stay. I will say pack snacks. That was like really nice to have, especially while we had such a long labor and like pack a good water bottle. And I would also say a 10 foot long charger and make sure that your partner also has stuff like a sweater, water bottle, snacks, and a change of clothes and stuff as well. But yeah, I think I mostly covered it all in my video. So be sure to go check those out. The next thing I have here is what was it like working with a doula? Honestly, I think it was a really positive experience. I think for me, I didn't really utilize her that much until like actual labor and delivery. Before we had two kind of like prenatal appointments where the first one we talked about birth preferences and kind of like meeting us and stuff. And the second one was more of like laboring, like techniques, positions, pain relief, like alternative pain relief to get through labor. And I don't know, like those ones were fine. I don't think we really like talked about too much other than like that kind of stuff in there and it was not like I don't know I didn't like utilize like texting her and stuff like I could have if I had any questions about my pregnancy but I had a pretty smooth pregnancy I would say so I, I didn't but definitely when it came time to labor and delivery it was really nice she came to the hospital when I was kind of feeling like I needed her and I needed help and labor was stalling and she kind of helped like I don't know encourage me to walk and do the stairs and stuff because I probably wouldn't have <laughs> if I was just by myself and she was also helping with like different maneuvers to move baby down and things like that I don't think I really like developed a huge personal relationship with her at the same time like I don't think I really wanted to like no offense like she was a really nice person but it was almost helpful for me to have her more as a third party like telling me what to do rather than that being more like a friend relationship because then I feel like that dynamic changes so like overall like I felt like it was really positive experience for me personally I think her services and like her type of service was like something that aligned well with myself like it wasn't too hokey pokey like natural labor and delivery she does do like home deliveries and stuff but she doesn't like force that on you obviously I know some doulas can be a little bit more pushy for like natural ways and like things like that but she was like really informative and helped us like through decision making and things like that so overall like I think it was a pretty positive experience and I really liked working with her especially for like that specific labor and delivery every piece but she did take awesome photos and videos for us too so I like that okay next question here is any tips for adjusting to sleep deprivation honestly not really it's just kind of a part of the newborn stage I feel like he did pretty well the first like couple weeks and then once he kind of became more aware of his surroundings and that he was not in the womb anymore it's definitely been like a little bit more of a roller coaster especially in the hospital he did not sleep in his bassinet because he's so long he's like a really long baby for some reason he didn't fit in that little clear bassinet thing that they provide so he would not sleep in there because he would like whack his arm or leg every time he'd like kind of startle and we didn't bring his like actual swaddle to the hospital we only had like their blanket swaddles so um he like broke out of those pretty quickly and we mostly just took shifts on like sleeping with him contact napping and sleeping with him so if you have a partner at home that is you know able to take shifts with you or help you out during those nights because i feel like the nights can get very lonely then that's obviously like really helpful so you can get some rest and just kind of like take turns I guess tending to the baby so one of you can at least be sleeping. I know people say sleep in the baby sleeps but I would almost say that that is not accurate. It is very hard to sleep when the baby sleeps especially those first few weeks because there's just so many other things you want to get done and you want to have time to yourself like basically when the baby's sleeping you have like four choices like basically to do something for yourself like shower Hour, you can eat you could sleep or you could get housework done and that's pretty much it and I feel like sleep definitely kind of hits the lower end of that list because sometimes you just want to shower or you need to eat like those two things for me were top priority and then sleep and household work were a little bit lower priority but honestly that's I don't really know if there's like any advice to adjusting to it it's just kind of it is what it is I guess like shift 
t taking if you have a partner if you're able to have a partner or ask for help if you have like parents family friends anybody who can you know come um, take a shift with the baby for a while that you can get you know a couple hours of sleep and even like a couple hours of in uninterrupted sleep I feel like are really helpful especially knowing that your baby is safe and taken care of I feel like that puts my mind at ease so that I can sleep easier so I guess that would be my only advice okay next question is what was the most surprising part about giving giving birth as a first time mom. The most surprising part I think is how long early labor took and just like the intensity of contractions. For me, I definitely don't, I don't know, I feel like I don't really have a lot of intense period cramps. So the intensity of contractions was definitely surprising for me and how much like water I still had in there because my water initially broke, like it was like an, an actual pop of like gush of fluid when it initially broke but I was still leaking water like throughout labor which I found really interesting. I don't know if it's surprising but I definitely didn't know that about labor. I think also the time it takes to push. They told me I'm like how long you know can I expect to be pushing and stuff and they're like oh you know usually first time moms are like two to three hours. Thankfully I had an awesome doula who helped me push a lot faster than that but two to three hours sounds awful <laughs> honestly or even longer I just feel like you get so tired from pushing like it is hard work to like push for 10 seconds um and like you have to push in a way that like actually moves the baby down because the baby's gonna move down and then kind of come back up with like as you like release those muscles so you have to like push so far um so that it actually makes progress and i thought that was like harder than I thought it was going to be like I thought it was like oh you know not too bad but it was like very draining. I think the other thing that kind of surprised me is that the IV actually hurt more than the epidural. Trying to get the IV into my arm and stuff she like blew a vein in this arm and then had to try this one um, but trying to do that in between contractions especially when they're coming like every minute two minutes was like really hard for me to try and like breathe through the contraction and then breathe through getting a needle stabbed into my arm um well, that was not fun I did not like that but then once the IV was in I feel like yeah even the epidural like I could feel a little bit like a little pinch kind of like as the needle went in but other than that, like I feel like the epidural, maybe I was just like more calm or more relieved that we were finally getting it by that point. Um, but breathing through that and contractions was way easier than trying to breathe through getting the IV and contractions. So I don't know. I feel like that was really weird. And the last question I have here is describe the pain of going through labor. It's like, I don't know. How do you even describe it? It feels like very intense cramps and it just drains you like it just sucked the life out of me and again I don't know if it's because they were like pretty consistent and strong I just feel like your whole body or at least my like whole like abdomen area like just tenses up and like you have to focus on that for the like duration of the contraction and I was trying to like different breathing techniques and stuff to get through it um, but it definitely feels like a very very intense tightening of your whole like abdomen region like from basically like here down to your hips I would say once I got the epidural it's obviously way better but would make it like two steps down the hallway and just have to like stop and like breathe and try and concentrate and on like each contraction but it was pretty intense like more intense than I was initially thinking it was going to be I don't really know if you can like describe the pain almost like the endurance of running a marathon while your body is like taking a beating. I don't even know, <laughs> but it's hard to describe. I know a lot of people like are kind of wondering like what is it like to actually go through labor and I don't think you really know until you do it and you can't really describe it either. And it's also been six weeks since I give, gave birth. So I feel like maybe my judgment is a little clouded now, but I definitely remember like pretty much being in tears each contraction and just like dreading the next one coming but I know they say like you have to take it like one contraction at a time but like it was just so intense and so draining for me that's why I was like begging for the epidural because I was just getting no rest like I was literally trying to sleep in between each contraction but they were coming so quickly so yeah unfortunately I don't really have like a specific description of the pain 
other than it was intense and a lot. Okay, but that is all the questions I have for today's video. And I think it's pretty long now that I added this Q&A part. So I'm going to end it here. So thanks so much for watching today's Q&A vlog type of video. If you guys enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. I have a one month update um, already up and stuff. So if you wanna go check that out, be sure to catch up on all of those videos. And I'm sure we'll be back with the vlogs very, very soon. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.